right, in this video right here, we're gonna be running containers. We're gonna be exploring some of the concepts behind running containers and some of the things you should be aware of. Um, and uh, in, in this video right here, we're gonna be focusing uh, on the Postgres database. And the reason behind that is because Postgres has um, something that we need to be careful of. And it's not like other stuff like Redis, you know, where even if you lose the data because it's in memory anyway, it's okay. Like Postgres has a sensitive thing where uh, you want that data to be persisted. And then when you turn off containers, you don't want the database to go away because, you know, it's, it's important. Like the stuff you store in Postgres is very important. So um, the easiest way to run it is just to click create. And that's what I'm going to do. So what this is going to do is it's going to download the image and run it. And we're going to see right here as soon as it starts up, um, it's going to boot up the container with the default configurations. And we're not going to go into details about configuring all the stuff in Postgres. We're just going to get it up and running. And then I'm going to show you guys some of the things that we need to be aware of uh, when working with containers. All right. So now we have our database successfully started and we see this URL here. Now, let me explain a little bit about ports. Uh, when a Docker container is being run, it's kind of like running inside of another OS, right? So it's in the, the OS. So in this case, you know, the base um, the OS that's being used uh, in this container, I mean, you can look in the Docker file. We're not going to go into that, but it's Debian, right? Um, and so it's in an OS inside of an OS. Now, what that means is, you know, when we want to access the the service, uh, you know, Postgres by default maps to the port 5432. And on the host, so on the machine, the second layer uh, that is running the, the Linux that is running Docker, uh, where the container is actually running in, um, we're actually mapping by default, uh, it's mapping to port 32770 right over here. And uh, what that means is if we want to access that from our um, primary OS, the OS X uh, operating system that we're running, we need to connect through this IP. So this IP is the IP of the Linux, the, the guest OS that's running uh, on OS X. So um, we're going to connect to this IP on, on this port and this port in turn maps to the Docker container uh, which has uh, port 5432 mapped to it. Let's try and connect and see what happens. So I'm gonna open up uh, PG Commander over here. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I have this Docker PG here. I'm gonna edit it. And I've already got 192.168.99.100 over here. And so what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna put in 32770. And the user, the default user for the container, the Postgres container is Postgres. So I'm gonna hit connect and here we are. Uh, as you can see here, um, as you can see here, we are connected to the database. And if I click here, you can see the default databases that already exist over there. All right, cool. So we use the Kitematic GUI to run the container, but on our server, we don't have Kitematic. So what do we do? How do we do this in the command line? Let's take a look. So here we are, I'm gonna run the container, uh, another Postgres container. So now we have the default one running, which we use the GUI to run. Let's um, create another container running Postgres. And so we're gonna do docker run uh, IT, and sorry, not IT, but uh, D. So this is basically going to um, make docker run uh, in the daemon, like behind the scenes. So we, you know, it'll run it and then it will we'll be bounced back to the terminal in OS X. So, and then what we're gonna say in name, we're gonna name our container R Postgres. So this is the one that we actually started. Actually, let me change this to a CLI for our command line uh, interface. So this is the one we started using the CLI. Uh, and what we're gonna set is P5432 colon 5432. Now, what this hyphen P means is um, it's the same thing here, but what we're going to do is we're gonna say, hey, you know what? I wanna map, instead of using some random port number, I wanna map port 5432 on the machine that the Docker is being run to the port inside of the container. So when I access, you know, using PG Commander, I don't have to, um, so if I go back over here and I close this out, 
I can just use the port 5432 over here, which is the natural default port for Postgres. Um, and for development purposes, that's going to work. Um, yeah, and, and that's what the hyphen P is, is for. So what we're going to do next is then we're going to say uh, hyphen V. Now, this is an extra option. By default, you do not need to do this, but I suggest that you do. And here's why. By default, Docker manages your volumes for you. Your volume means, you know, that's where your data is stored. Uh, your database is, is all stored in your volume. And if you don't know the name of your volume, uh, I mean, you can always resolve all this. Like luckily now by default, Docker no longer deletes volumes. So your data is not actually lost, um, but it's good to kind of like name your own volume. So I'm going to call this PG data and I'm going to type in the, see this volume over here? This var lib postgres postgresql data. That's uh, the directory that is you know, being used by Postgres database to write all the data. And, uh, you know, where do we get that from? Well, if you go to, to the settings, the container has some defaults. Uh, and here it is, PG data. This is the, the you know, the, the setting that comes by default with a Postgres Docker file. Uh, so when you run the Docker container, it's going to use this setting. And we'll talk about setting all this stuff uh, later. But for now, we just want to get the, the container up and running and understand that volumes is very important because that's where your data is being stored. Now, in certain containers, it doesn't really matter so much, uh, you know, where or how your volume is run. Like, for example, if you're running a service like Memcache, that's going to run in memory. Like all your stuff that you're storing is in memory and, you know, memory is volatile anyway. It's not persisted. Uh, same with Redis, like you may or may not need persist, uh, persistent data. So you don't need to worry about volumes over there. But for a service like Postgres, you need to think about uh, volume mappings. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what, use this PG data and we're going to map it to var lib postgresql data. So var lib postgresql data. So uh, we understood, you know, in, when we did hyphen P, we map the port of the machine, so the second layer OS, the Linux OS that's running Docker, to the container's port. Now what we're saying is we wanna map the volume of this name, and if the volume doesn't exist, it's going to create it. If it does exist though, it's going to just not create it, but just use the same uh, volume. So you know, if you have stuff in there already, it'll just pull all the stuff and then just use that. Um, so we're gonna map this volume to this path here, and then we're gonna use Postgres latest and hit enter. So now if I do Docker PS, uh, we're gonna see we have two containers running over here. Uh, one is mapped to the port 5432 uh, and uh, one is, let me just you know, make this font a little bit smaller so we can see the whole row. So as you can see here, 000 is mapped, uh, 5432 is mapped to the, you know, the containers port of 5432. Um, so now we have two instances of Postgres running. The, the one we connected to before was um, one that we created using the Kitematic and that was just, everything was default and we didn't know anything that was going on in there. But this one, we control the volume and we control the port that we wanna use. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So if you go to Kitematic, we'll see over here, our container is now actually running. And uh, so we can connect to this and so let's uh, try that. So I'm gonna go into my PG commander again. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the port to 5432 and connect. And uh, here we go. So now we're in a different instance and let me go inside and do something a little bit more cool and show you guys uh, what's, what's up. So I'm gonna come back to this terminal here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of the container and then I'm gonna run a PSQL, which is the command line interface for the Postgres database. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do docker exec IT. So because I wanna go inside of the container and run the shell so I can control the container, uh, I'm gonna use hyphen IT. Anytime you see I hyphen IT, it means now you're gonna interact with the container like on the command line level, right? Okay, so then now we're gonna specify the name. So in this case, it's CLI Postgres and then uh, bin sh. So we're just gonna run the shell. Now we're inside the container, all right? We're in the container. What I'm gonna do is psql hyphen u uh, postgres. So that's the default user. We're inside the postgres database now. And what I'm going to do is create a database. So 
um, create database. Let's just say our DB with owner uh, Postgres. All right, so I'm gonna quit out from here and exit from here. And what I'm going to do is uh, check out PG Commander and hit reload. Check that out. So we just went in there in PSQL, created a, a database. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the persistence. So um, I'm gonna disconnect, I'm gonna delete the container. So I'm gonna go to Kitematic. Actually, let's do it through the command line. So Docker PS. So if I wanna stop this container, uh, what I can do is Docker stop CLI Postgres. All right, so now this is gonna shut down the Postgres uh, database and it's going to um, you know, just stop running it and then uh, it's gonna hit, uh, bounce us back to the terminal. All right, here we are, uh, Docker PS. Now, when you stop a container from running, uh, it's gonna disappear from Docker PS, but you can still see it, it's not deleted yet. What you can do is Docker PS hyphen A, and this is gonna list uh, you know, the, the containers, all the containers that you have in your system. And as you can see here, uh, we have the CLI Postgres container running, it says it exited 13 seconds ago. All right, um, so if we go back to Kitematic, you can see that it's not running anymore. And what will happen is if I delete this container here, our data is lost, right? Like how do we get back to our data? Oh no, don't worry, everything is just fine. What we're going to do is we're gonna run the same command again uh, because that old uh, thing is gone. We're gonna run the command again. And uh, this time I'm gonna call it CLI Postgres underscore two. And then, uh, you know, I'm just gonna run that, but check out the volume mapping. I'm mapping PG data, the same thing we did before. Uh, so I'm gonna run this container again. All right, Docker PS, our container's running. And if I connect back to our, so I'm gonna close this here and I'm going to connect back into the, the container we just created, we are going to see our DB over there just dandy and it's fine. Uh, you know, nothing was deleted because we made sure we connected to the same volume that was there. Let's explore this whole volume thing a little further. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going into, you know, so far we've, we've been in OS X and we have been accessing Docker via uh, the second layer of the Linux OS. And, you know, we're, we're accessing our container, everything through our Linux OS. Now we're gonna directly actually go inside of that OS, right? We're gonna go into the second layer uh, of the operating system now. So Docker uses this thing called the Docker machine. So Docker hyphen machine. And, uh, you know, it ha it's a tool that, you know, they have for, you know, managing Linux uh, virtual machines that, you know, it, it, underneath it all, it's using VirtualBox. But it's just a command line tool that allows you to like, you know, work with the VM, right? So if I do Docker machine LS, um, it's gonna show you, here it is, the default that's active VirtualBox with the IP address that we have been connecting to. Um, that, you know, this is with Docker 1.1.1 running. Uh, we can actually SSH into here. And what we can do is Docker machine SSH. And by default, it's gonna use a default one. And here we are. Now we're in the Linux OS that's running Docker for us. So we can do Docker PS. All the things that we did on OS X is now gonna work um, just fine. And if, you know, I'm gonna go into the root. So I'm gonna do sudo hyphen I. And now I'm, I'm at root, what I can do is I can do cd var lib, and I'm gonna see a, 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 a symbolic link here called Docker. And if I go into there, so cd docker, uh, I can see, you know, all the stuff, like you should not, you don't, generally when you're working with Docker, you don't need to come in here, but um, I just wanna portray to you guys what's going on in terms of the volume mapping, because I think it's very important to understand where your data is living, you know, like, so you know in your head, oh, hey, this is the directory that it's living in, and I understand it's being used for, you know, storing the data, so that when you, if you need to ever, you know, do something to it, like take a, take it out as a snapshot and put it somewhere, you know where it is. So uh, if I go into CD volumes, and we can actually see that, see, there's like, 
if you don't specify the volume name, Docker is going to generate the, the volume name for you. And it's going to be some weird cryptic number that, you know, I don't know like what that is. But if you do, it's going to be stored in the directory that you specify. So if I do PG data, I can actually see. So this is actually the folder that's storing all the data uh, from the Postgres container that we were running. Yeah, so um, there's another way we can access it, which is just using Docker. So if I switch over here, so now I'm back in OSX land. Uh, and if I do Docker volumes, volume, and I can do uh, Docker volume ls, I can see all the volumes I have. And that's, you know, Docker managing the volumes for us. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys found that useful. Um, you know, understanding running containers and setting up volumes is, uh, you know, something that was very important to me because, you know, initially, um, when I created containers, I didn't know where my data was being stored. So it scared me and I was like, wow, you know, this sucks. But now that I understand it, it's all right. Well, that's how it's done. It's great. You know, it works. Um, you can, you know, you can do all kinds of other stuff. You can actually map your own folders as well. So you don't have to use a Docker's managed, uh, you know, volumes, but you can have your own folders and you can map your own folders to the, vo uh, the containers volume. And then it'll write to the folder that you want as well. But we'll explore that in a different episode. With that, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Have a good one.